I love that, Diddy. Oh, you guys still having a good time? Sweet. We are too. No, go ahead, take it off. That's great. <laughs> I was a joke. I would never take off my clothes. Never nude. <laughs> yeah, I'm a never nude. Yeah. My real name is Tobias. They're not sad, they're literally blue. <laughs> If you've ever watched Arrested Development, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Um, how many people here uh, know what a lanyard is? Yeah. yeah? Oh, okay, great. Um, for those of you who don't know, a lanyard is basically just a glorified keychain. You see people wear them around their necks and stuff like that. So, there you go. Thank you. <laughs> I, I don't know, I can't tell if you were clapping because I burped or... <laughs> he has gas, yes. Maybe we can harness it and use it to fuel the world. Great. I don't know why water makes me gassy. All right. I remember sitting at a workbench at a camp, learning how to braid long, thin plastic strips into a lanyard, a gift for my mother. I had never seen anyone use a lanyard, or wear one, if that's what you did with them. But that did not keep me from folding strand over strand again and again until I'd made a boxy red and white lanyard for my mother. She gave me life and milk from her breasts. And I gave her a lanyard. <laughs> she nursed me in many a sick room, lifted spoons of medicine to my lips, then led me out into the airy light, taught me to walk and swim, and I, in turn, presented her with a lanyard. <laughs> Here are thousands of meals, she said. Here is clothing and a good education. <laughs> and here is your lanyard, I replied. <laughs> which I made with a little help from a counselor. <laughs> here are strong legs, bones, and teeth, she whispered. And here are two clear eyes with which to read the world. And here is the lanyard. <laughs> of that I made at camp. <laughs> And here, I wish to say to her now, is a smaller gift. Not the worn truth that you can never repay your mother, but the rueful admission that when she took the two-tone lanyard from my hand, I was as sure as a boy could be that this useless, worthless thing that I'd woven out of boredom would be enough to make us even. Stay. That's what mothers say when their sons and daughters go away. They say, stay. My mother said, go. <laughs> so I wasn't there. The night she fell out of her wheelchair so frustrated that she amputated her own legs, or rather tried to, with a steak knife, her life leaking out on the white floor, blossoming like roses in the snow. Our relationship was an anthem composed of words like, gotta go. So we went and sent our regards on postcards from all the places we'd been with stories about all the things we'd seen. That's how it was with you and I. Why say goodbye when we could still write? But then it took your hands. We should have practiced our goodbyes because then it took your eyes. And I was somewhere in the middle of nowhere watching the sun rise over a stop sign placed down the center line of a highway filled with sudden turns for the worse. Running back home because I got to play nurse. 
got to figure out which pill alleviates which pain, which part of your brain was being used for a boxing bag as your body became a never-ending game of freeze tag taking place in an empty playground. I was left looking for your limbs in a lost and found, and I couldn't set you free. So we just sat there, our heads bent towards each other like flowers in the small hours of the morning while light wandered in like a warning that time is passing. And you, right along with me, <coughs> bit by bit, every day. And all I could say is if I could, I would write you some way out of this. But my gift is useless, and you said no. Write me a poem to make me happy. So I wrote, move, pen, move. Write me a bedroom where cures make love to our cancers. But my mother just motions to a bottle full of answers and says, help me go. And now I know something of how a piano must feel when it looks at the fireplace to see sheet music being used for kindling. Smoke signaling the end of some song that I thought it would take too long to learn. Now I just sit here watching you burn away. All those notes I never had a chance to play to hear the music of what you had to say, but I count out the pills just to see if I can do it. And I can't even get halfway through it before I turn back into your son and say, stay. I could hook up my heart to your ears and let my tears be your morphine drip. And maybe it's easier to let you slip away than it is to say goodbye. So I hold my breath. Because in the countdown to death, the question of why melts into when. How much time do we have left? Because if I knew what I know now, then move, pen, move, write me a mountain. Because headstones are not big enough. And my mother says, stop it. Write me a poem to make me happy. So I write this. Stay. She smiles and says, gotta go. I know. Goodbye.